Thanks to Team 17 for sponsoring this video. Stick around to learn more about the upcoming game, Sworn. Hack and slash your way through legions of enemies as you fight to purge Camelot of an evil corruption. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're diving into a new action roguelite, Sworn, checking out the game for the first time and breaking down some of the key gameplay features that make the experience what it is. Since the first roguelikes burst onto the scene, I have been enamored with the genre. Challenging mechanics meets constant progression is just something I always thought worked well, and over the years, new games have taken the now popular formula and tried to perfect them. Today, we're looking at Sworn by Windwalk Games, an upcoming title that caught our eye a few months back when it was first revealed. If you're into medieval high fantasy with a dark twist, then this is right up your alley, because in Sworn, your job is to hunt down and defeat Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table, who have all been corrupted. Now, I think there's a great story to tell there, and it's no secret other games in this genre have made a name for themselves by combining finely tuned combat and progression systems with immersive storytelling. Sworn is knocking at that door, and although we only had access to a portion of the game, it's pretty clear that the team wants to draw players into the world and characters. But the other side of that coin is the gameplay, and quite honestly, that's the thing I most love about roguelike games, breaking into the combat, progression, and everything else that makes the game what it is. So let's dive in. In Sworn, you have access to four playable characters, the Vigilante, the Rook, the Spectre, and the Monk. By spending crystals, you can unlock up to four weapons for each of the four heroes, and what that really means is 16 complete different ways to approach a run. We're not talking slight nuances either. Each weapon, whether it's the Vigilante's sword, or the Monk's chimes, or the Spectre's sphere, each plays differently, and as you push deeper into the game, you'll realize you have to build around those weapons in new ways. On top of that selected character and weapon, you'll need to unlock and equip a spell. Each of the four unlockable spells are again themed around the characters and function differently depending on the character that you're using. Quite honestly, this level of unique control before ever stepping into a run is something I've always wanted from similar roguelike games, and to be able to mix and match these after a bit of resource farming of course, I actually really enjoyed pushing the limits of different builds. I was surprised on more than one occasion when the synergy of a weapon and spell worked better or in some cases, worse than I expected. Your character, weapon, and spell lay the foundation for your run, but there are a few more progression systems you'll be able to tap into, and these provide long-term buffs that will help you push deeper into the game. By talking to the wizard Merlin, you'll gain access to a constellation system. Here, you can spend your currency to unlock passive bonuses that persist throughout your runs. At first, you'll only have access to the life constellation, but as you unlock more, you'll be able to tap into benefits across every category. Back at camp, you can also talk to Namwe, who will increase the potency of your various weapons. By spending a different resource, you can unlock nodes within the weapons progression system that increase their deadliness. There are even major nodes along the way and a rather interesting switch mechanic that lets you choose what aspect of the weapon this specific node enhances. This usually aligns with a certain playstyle, which gives you even more options, no matter the playstyle you prefer. There are just a couple other things I wanted to call out about the camp. Here, you can choose the difficulty of the game. What we had access to was only a fragment of the full experience, and I will say that the Squire difficulty was very manageable, so if you often find these types of games challenging, I think you'll be fine because I would say Sworn starts out on the more forgiving end of the spectrum. There's also the Fisher King, who acts as a sort of lore keeper within the game. When you talk to him, you can look at the various fey buffs you've unlocked throughout your various runs and theorycraft a build that might serve you better in the future. It's ultimately a compendium of buff information, but I'm sure some will find that helpful. Once you get your bearings in base camp, things move pretty quickly, and between runs, you'll upgrade your gear, make a few adjustments, and be on your way to take on Arthur and his Legion of Corrupted Knights. So let's talk about the action because this is where things really start to get interesting. If you've played other action roguelikes, Sworn is going to feel familiar, and that's a good thing because they really nailed the action combat. One thing I want to call out is that Sworn is actually a co-op game. You can play solo, that's totally fine, or with up to three other friends forming a party of four, and that's something you just don't see in this genre. 
Things do start out slow, as is often the case in a roguelite, as you figure out your weapon and spell. But room by room, the gameplay expands. Once you clear the initial room, you'll have a choice to make. Which door to open, and the icon on the door indicates what reward you'll receive if you clear that room. Sometimes it's some gold pieces, other times a valuable progression resource, but in my opinion, the most important doors are the ones that reward you with combat enhancements. These come in two varieties, starting with Fey Blessings. If you clear one of these rooms, you're presented with two different Fey Blessings. Each Fey has a theme, and you'll have to figure out which ones work best for your playstyle. Some Fey enchant your attacks with Poison, while others imbue your combat with Fury, a stacking buff that increases your attack power so long as you keep attacking. There's a buff for every playstyle, and the kicker is you can combine multiple Fey Blessings to create a unique build. Blessings enhance various aspects of your character's moveset, which is something else to consider. Every character, no matter their weapon, has access to a light attack, a heavy attack, their spell, and a dash. Fey Blessings enhance one aspect of that kit, and once you lock that in, you can't change the blessing, but you can continue to enhance it, making it even more potent. The truth is, you're going to try and fail. That's the beauty of a game like this. You might find that you don't actually like Poison Blessings, or maybe they're just not effective with your specific weapon and spell loadout, so you adjust and try something different the next time around. With 16 weapons, 16 spells, and over 200 Blessings, there really is no ceiling on how many unique combinations are out there. There's also another combat enhancement called the Sword in the Stone, and these are hands down my favorite types of buffs in the game because they enhance your weapon's fundamental capabilities. What does that mean exactly? Well, simply put, it changes something about the way your weapon functions. For example, it might add a flourish to your last attack, or give you additional projectiles. Sword in the Stone buffs change your weapon in a way that can also change your playstyle, which is why it's important to always go for these buffs when they're available, because they're that powerful. Throughout the rest of your run, the goal is survival, and while Fey Blessings and Sword in the Stone buffs are good, Ultimately, you're trying to clear rooms that provide resources that you can take back to camp and use to increase your overall power. A strong build means clearing more rooms, and that means more resources you can take back to camp. Clearing rooms might sound easy, but Sworn throws a lot of tough enemies at players, and just like other games in the genre, it's not one enemy that's going to kill you. It's the combination of multiple enemies and overlapping abilities that becomes tricky to navigate. One thing Sworn does really well is create enemies that are visually easy to identify and gives them a distinct moveset that is straightforward and easy to identify. Giant ogres with clubs that slam the ground, wild boars that charge in a straight line, alchemist rats that throw balls of poison. Once you learn the unique ability of a specific enemy, you can work to anticipate and avoid taking damage. This happens over multiple playthroughs and consistent exposure to the enemies, but that's all part of the learning process. During our preview, we also had the opportunity to fight a few bosses. During a run, you'll encounter mini bosses, which are fun to fight and reward you with an emerald, a powerful resource you'll need to make specific upgrades back at camp. These mini bosses use two or three attacks and are certainly more challenging than standard enemies, but ultimately don't pose too much of a challenge. At the end of each zone are the real bosses, and these are the Corrupted Knights of the Round Table. In Zone 1, you'll fight Gawain, a hulking soldier with a corrupted axe that he uses to deadly effect. Zone bosses have a much more diverse moveset. For example, Gawain has a whirlwind attack, a jumping shockwave, and a slam attack that sends out homing tendrils, and that's just naming a few. They're challenging, but that's by design, and while you might die, again, that's part of the equation. So there you have it, Sworn and everything you can expect the first time you fire up the game. I am genuinely having a blast with this game, and I think there's a lot of potential for Sworn to be amongst the elite roguelike games out there. Now, there's no official release date, and we only had access to a portion of the game, but there is a new demo available right now as part of the Steam Next Fest. If this game caught your attention, then click on the link in our description and check it out for yourself completely free. Of course, if you liked this video and you want more like it in your feed in the future, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. We've been covering road likes here on the channel for years now, and you better believe we'll continue covering them in the future. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.